Pechacucha 281, two Bisons, and a half Megatron. So I'm still just trying to kind of galvanize my approach to the week, uh, building up like a little systems that kind of anchor a certain amount of hard work that I can use for positive reinforcement to do more hard work um, while cutting back on the gaming. So I didn't do a Bison last week because I spoke about... Um, how to draw the Marvel way. So I thought, you know what, let's do two Bisons this week. It's supposed to be a cover so I can do some, some work on, on uh, theory crafting for my book, but in the end I didn't do anything. Uh, so I started drawing an M. Bison with the idea of, let's do him doing a scissors kick, one of those special moves of his. And I wanted his feet to be super big. Um, doing something this perspective heavy and reliant, there was this idea in my head like it should be like anime perspective but I don't know what that is I just know it's a thing uh, in the end I, I ummed and I ahed and I hemmed and I hawed and I kind of just thought you know let's bring it back a little bit um, let's redraw things until they feel like they kind of click and I ended up with this which is less heavy on the perspective but <laughs> much easier for me to figure out how to put both of his legs next to each other because I felt basically I could only draw one leg where I wanted it and the other leg just felt like it was erroneous uh, to the overall composition. So I kind of re-penciled it. Um, at this point I was pretty non-committal to... I, I mean I always am non-committal with Bisons but like I didn't even finish one of his feet. I had a sneaking suspicion colouring the whole thing in would, would do a great job of obfuscating uh, the weakness of the art. Which it does. I mean the whole thing of these Bisons is they're quick in, quick out. You know, these things don't typically take me more than two hours. I did record the footage. We'll have to see what I do with that. I think it would be prudent to talk about it, but that doesn't mean I will. Uh, and, you know, I also wanted to just dip back into this Megatron drawing I've been doing because I've really enjoyed how it's kind of been building up um, with me just trying to hide the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. And I think it, it's it's kind of an enjoyable experience to just like take a section try and flesh it out like this with his head I'm just trying to like get a little bit more closer to accurate symmetrical um, considered lighting uh, application of shapes to create a form that is some in some way shape or form reminiscent of Megatron from G1 Transformers so what I basically spent this week doing was just looking at the head sorting that out Cleaning up a lot of the upper torso, um, but I did manage to kind of lose the dynamism of the pose a little bit, where his upper torso and his hips kind of, there, there was a, like a a twisting that was really cool, which I've kind of started to inadvertently straighten out because I'm zooming in so much. Um, this is one of those things about working in minutia and zooming in too much. You can lose the actual flow, so I have to be weary of that. I kind of decided to back off at that point and then worked on my second bison uh, for the week where I typically seem to be finding as the, as the weeks go on something I've looked at I'll just put M. Bison in that position so this is kind of like a Batman meme where um, I think from one of the Frank Miller books Bruce Wayne's figuring out I want to fight crime but I don't know how and then a bat flies through the window and he goes yes of course it all makes sense of course it does Bruce of course it does maybe you should try going back to sleep at night see how that works out but yeah so the idea was you know he's he's at stately Wayne Manor um, there's a window blocking uh, part of the composition it's a nighttime scene um, yeah I wasn't looking to heavily reference any one particular thing uh, like I said, these things are supposed to be in and out. And I'm pretty happy with, you know, I've got across the composition that I was trying to ape from Frank Miller without actually getting any of it right. Uh, I was also watching one of the mangaka I'm subscribed to. I don't know if Akihito Yoshitomi is, is currently working, but he definitely produces work that is of a professional standard. And just watching him use a Cintiq and use the same tools I use... <laughs> Allegedly the same ways I use them and get the results he gets. I don't know. It's it's encouraging, but it, it's it, it's uh, a little bit disconcerting. I've also watched a ton of Columbo clips this week. I love me some detective TV shows, and I think Columbo is probably the best detective show ever. Love me some Poirot as well. 
I lost a whole day to watching Columbo, and I'd do it again if they keep putting clips up. Typically, when I do um, work, I am listening to Jim Cornette complain about modern wrestling. Um, and the reason I bring it up this week is because his co-host, Brian Last, was making a joke about a couple of wrestlers uh, and a website domain. And he joked that someone would take that web domain and actually make that joke based on his joke. And they did. Nash is on Dixie's lap.com is a real thing. I went to it while Brian Last was recommending Jim Cornette do this live on the podcast. It's a wonderful bit of interactivity to do these things in real time while something is happening somewhere else. I also discovered a YouTube channel called Jack Rackham, who seems to just do kind of JPEG animated illustration type things about history in a highly entertaining and con- comical man- manner. He spoke about Wang Man, the man who reversed a thousand years of Chinese history. It was very entertaining, so I saw what else was on his channel. His YouTube video on Theodore Roosevelt is so preposterous. <laughs> um, was Theodore Roosevelt a real man, or was he the world's first Chuck Norris? The world's first anime character? I don't know, but I'm a fan. Uh, and then I finished off the week with Saturday Smileys, just you know, dipping into this seven page smiley show i did a few weeks ago doing a little bit here doing a little bit there doing the text um you know tightening up the the artwork i am going to by hook or crook slowly trick myself into finishing this and then i'll do another one and then another one and another one so you know all of these things that i'm trying out this year are to end the year even if i don't have this book that i'm supposed to be doing because i'm fucking stalling again i will have stuff and I can take a good, hard, long look at what I want to do next year. What I can survive telling myself I'm going to do and what I can trick myself into doing. Uh, I do believe it is possible to get more done than I do. And I'll figure it out and you'll see it here. So that's the end of Picture Culture 281 and I will see you next time.